22 former presidents of the National Union of Students have written a letter expressing, quote, serious concerns about anti-Semitism and the safety and treatment of Jewish students. Well, this comes after the chair of the Education Select Committee, Robert Halfen MP, called for the Charity Commission to look into the student body, saying, quote, the NUS has allowed a culture of discrimination and harassment against Jewish students to brew, to the point where they suggested Jewish students segregate themselves from an event. The very opposite of inclusion here. Shocking that. We'll get stuck into that, actually. The NUS US have said in response that they take anti-Semitism allegations seriously and there's no place for anti-Semitism within the student movement. As well, joining us now to give us more on this is Sabrina Miller, who's a freelance journalist who, as a student, took on anti-Semitism on campus. We appreciate your time this morning. Um, is there an endemic problem, a chronic issue with the NUS um, when it comes to anti-Semitism, in your opinion? A hundred percent. This is the second time in 10 years that the NUS has elected a president with a history of making anti-Semitic comments. I spoke to a couple of friends who were at the 2022 conference and they told me that they felt scared to show their Star of Davids in public, that they felt unsafe at conference. And this is crazy to me because NUS places a huge amount of emphasis on liberation. And yet when it comes to Jewish people, there is a huge double standard and the needs of Jewish students are completely ignored. But this indicates, doesn't it, I mean, you will know more about the exact election process at the NUS than I will, no doubt. But does this not indicate a worrying undercurrent of anti-Semitism amongst the youth, frankly? Because they, they will have had to vote for it, won't they? They will have had to vote for someone who's basically had a history of making rather fruity comments about Jews, you know? I think that this isn't really the case because... The NUS is frankly not at all representative of students. The turnout for NUS delegate elections is abysmal. Now, within the NUS movement, those are the people that vote for the president. And that group is a, mainly made up of people with really fringe views. But general students don't engage with the NUS because they know that it's a completely insane organisation. And it is not at all representative of students at the national level. And I think Rob Halfen has been really brilliant in calling this out because NUS is not at all representative. It's frankly an unfit organisation to represent the needs of most students. Uh, is, I mean, I don't mean to be crude uh, about this, although this is very crass, but isn't the case that, look, a lot of Islam, this, this lady is of, of Islamic origin, obviously. We know there's a long-standing rift uh, between people of the Muslim faith, lots of people of the Muslim faith and Jews. And we know the left, many members of the radical left have a problem with Jews. Could it be that because um, it's this cohort of people, that that's why these sentiments are, are revealing themselves more than they would in, in the general population? I, I wouldn't say it's because of that reason. I would say that it's because the NUS is made up of people on the far left of society, of all of all types of people on the far left of society. The current president, Larissa Kennedy, has also had a huge issue with tackling the needs of Jewish students. Um, so, for instance, she was the one that told Jews to go into a separate space when Loki was performing. I don't think this is about... Um, I don't think this is about that. Uh, I think this is because NUS is largely made up of people with really, really far left views that aren't willing to accept the institu institutional anti-Semitism that exists with the, within the NUS. It clearly, in my opinion anyway, bear in mind we have actually invited them on. And it's not the first time we've invited them on, actually. Uh, they don't, they're not willing to have a conversation with us, so there's that. Uh, in my opinion... I don't think, and this is possibly the problem, I don't think they see it as racism. I'm not sure they see it for what it really is. And that's actually a really concerning trait because, I don't know about you, Sabrina, I certainly would expect that if I sat on this platform today and expressed, uh, well, certainly didn't condemn, shall we say, the views of a radical cleric who thinks gay people should burn to death and that the Holocaust was some kind of Allah's punishment for the corruption of Jews, right? I imagine I'd lose my job, OK? But however... You, what, you, can become, you can become the head of the NUS, can't you? I mean, it, it's, it's strange. They clearly don't see it, do they? I, I completely agree. I think there's, I think on the far left, when anti-Semitism manifests, because um, the people, these people sort of see themselves as quite progressive um, in their views and their outlook, they fail to see that actually they've gone sort of so far off the other end that they're now spouting racist conspiracy theories. And I think they actually need to recognise what they've been saying and recognise how problematic it is before we can make any change, which is why I ultimately think that NUS 
cannot be fixed. I think it's rotten to the core. And I think that if any meaningful change is going to happen and any meaningful representation of students is going to happen, this needs to happen with a completely new and different organisation because NUS is broken. Here, here, I agree very much with that. Um, let's yeah. scrap the whole thing, start start from fresh. Uh, look, Sabrina, thank you very much for coming on to speak uh, to us, a freelance journalist there, who did take on the issue of anti-Semitism on her campus.